Over the last few years, I kind of fell out of love with guitars. Not with playing them, but I just stopped getting excited about new guitar releases. That was until I found this. My name is Keelan Hughes, and this is the Ormsby SX 10th Anniversary GTR. As I said in the intro, some of the well-known and some might say authentic guitar brands have somewhat halted their quest for innovation to instead re-release the same guitar designs from 50 years ago. Some new colours, maybe some different pickups, and it's the showpiece at each year's man. It's become very, very boring. But this guitar is anything but boring. Ormsby guitars are based in Perth, Australia, and were founded by Perry Ormsby when he quit his job as a cabinet builder, the kitchen kind, not the cool kind, to build guitars. At this point in time, they've been around for 15 years, but what makes them special is that for the past 10 years, they've been building multi-scale guitars. I'll go into more detail on that in a minute. Ormsby became well known for his custom shop creations with crazy finishes, woods and shapes. But with the introduction of a Korean-made production line, the GTR series, which was introduced in 2015, the brand had become far more accessible and have grown tremendously in that short time. The GTRs come in runs, and this particular model is run 8. They make around 200 of each model in each run, and can be pre-ordered directly from Ormsby or from an Ormsby dealer. There are certain bonuses to pre-ordering from Ormsby that come in the form of optional upgrades, such as strap locks, Australian-made pickups, straps, and merchandise. The guitar I have here is the SX. It's based off the first Ormsby multiscale that was built 10 years ago, hence the 10th anniversary in the name. It comes in two finishes, pearl white, which is what the original came in, and Forget Me Not Blue, which is what I have here. It's the colour the original was intended to be, but was changed last minute. It's a metallic blue with a pearlescent quality, and it looks amazing in natural light. So let's start with the obvious. This is a multi-scale guitar. This means that there is a 2 inch difference in the string length fanning from 25.5 inches on the high E to 27.5 inches on the low E. This results in a couple of really cool features. Firstly, the lower strings have more tension than the higher strings. This means that you get really tight sounding lows with easy to bend high strings. And before anyone brings up balanced tension strings, this feels far superior to any balance set that I've tried. The guitar is also incredibly comfortable. In fact, it's the most comfortable guitar I've ever played. It looks daunting, but when I picked up this guitar for the first time, it took no more than 10 seconds for me to adjust to it. The comfort level does vary for some people, however. But this would really only apply if you've got quite short arms, as the neck is 2 inches longer than a standard fender. Think of it this way. If you can play a bass, even a short scale bass, you'll be able to play this. Starting with the specs, it's got an alder body paired with a 3 piece wenge neck, which rather interestingly is coated in a satin lacquer. In comparison to my Warwick bass, which is an open grain wenge neck, the satin really makes the neck feel a lot smoother and faster, and I do prefer it. The neck is a thin U shape, and it's just a little thicker than most Ibanez's I've played, and it's quite comfy. The guitar has an ebony fretboard with rolled edges for extra comfort, glow-in-the-dark loom inlay side dots for dark stages, and pearl dot inlays in a Z pattern on the face of the fretboard. A nice touch to the neck is the hidden fret tanks, which isn't very common on an unbound neck, and when compared to a Fender or an Ibanez, I think it makes the whole side of the neck look a lot neater. When it comes to frets, they're jumbo stainless steel, and there's a lot of them. 29 to be exact. While this may look like a gimmick, it's far from it. When playing any guitar, the highest fret is always the most unplayable. It's always cramped and your hand is always up against the body. With additional frets, not only does the 24th fret become a lot more usable, but it's also nice to have an extra third octave in the key of E. That's not all though. There's even more behind the 29 fret design that we'll get to later in the video. This model features gold hardware, Ormsby branded locking tuners, the proprietary Ormsby design bridge, volume and tone knobs with rubber rings for grip, and a bone nut. The guitar also comes in a molded hard shell case, and it's actually quite a nice one, although I personally prefer a nice padded gig bag, but as far as I know from run 11 onwards, those will be an option. Tonally, this guitar comes stuck with a traditional single coil in the neck called the Old School A2. What's cool about this is those 29 frets we were talking about earlier are not what gives the pickup its angle. They're just there to fill in space. The single coil is placed in such a way that where the high E crosses it, it's the equivalent of a strap middle pickup. But where the low E crosses the magnet, it's where the neck pickup of a strap would be. That gives this a tonal characteristic that I've never seen anywhere else. 
For the humbucker, it comes stock with a mid-gain passive in the bridge called the nunchucker. On this particular example, I opted to upgrade the humbucker to an Australian-made hot rock, which has an output of 13.4k, and I opted for an Alnico 8 magnet for added oomph. It features a three-way switch and a push-pull tone knob to split the coil of the humbucker. Now I'm going to give you some tones, but first a tonal disclaimer. The sounds you hear in any demo are a result of a collection of so many variables it's stupid. The player, the pick, the pickups, the pedals, the power, the cables, the strings, the amp, the speaker, the cabinet, the mics, the interface, the pros processing, the headphones you're listening on, and a whole lot more. Bottom line is, nearly every piece of gear sounds good in the room, and by the time it gets to you, it's going to sound nothing like it does in the room. So let's begin. <laughs> As with all good things, there's going to be some negatives, so let's talk about them. This guitar is packed with features and there's no denying that, but when I ordered, there was a feature that later got removed. Splayed scallops are something I had only ever seen on Ormsby stuff, and I thought they were really cool. Ten days prior to my order being placed, it was announced on the GTR Facebook group that this feature would be added to the guitar, and I ordered thinking that it would be present. Over the coming months, it was announced that World Guitars hadn't scalloped the guitars due to a communication error, and Ormsey couldn't do the scallops at their factory as the guitars had already been fretted. It was disappointing. 
However, it wasn't a deal breaker for me as this guitar still had tons of cool features and if I hadn't mentioned that the scallops were missing, the idea wouldn't have even crossed your mind. The only other negative is if you're impatient, pre-ordering is not for you. There's been a lot of delays in the production of GTRs. I purchased my guitar on the 30th of August 2018. It was estimated that the guitars would ship out to customers December 2018. It shipped the 21st of June 2019. Now the blame doesn't lie with OMV for this. They base their estimates of what World Instruments in Korea tell them. But it's worth noting that the estimated times are just that. Estimates. If you want a guitar now, check out Ormsby's Reverb store, which is where they have a bunch of guitars in stock and ready to ship out now. They may even have this model available. I took a shot in the dark on this guitar. I had never played an Ormsby before and I had never played a multi-scale. And at 1750 Australian dollars it wasn't a cheap gamble. But one of the main reasons I did it was because it felt like Ormsby was more than just a faceless company with a board of directors. There's personality there. Before I bought this guitar, I did some research about the brand, and to see a guy go from making kitchen cabinets, to custom guitars, to thousands of production guitars is amazing. And I could empathise with the amount of rejection that Perry got when he started out building guitars, and I love that he proved those people wrong. I wanted to support that. I've seen some people question the price for a Korean made guitar, and all I can really say to that is if you judge a guitar's quality based solely on its country of origin, you're an idiot. The guitar itself is fantastic, it plays, sounds and looks great. The only problem you're really going to face is after a gig you'll get swarmed by guitar players asking you about it. I'm not just saying that, this guitar has become my number one. It's not my main guitar of three years off the top. If anyone is looking for a guitar, I will always recommend an Ormsby. This is an independent review. I purchased the guitar myself and I'm giving my own unbiased opinion. Thanks for watching. If you like this review, please give the video a like. YouTube's current algorithm will show more people the video if you like it. Consider subscribing if you'd like to see more gear reviews like this one, and leave a comment and let me know what you think of the guitar. That's all from me, thanks, and I'll see you next time.